How's it going everybody? I'm Newbie Dave and welcome back to my Let's Play Minecraft series. What's this? Two episodes back to back? Well, I felt kind of bad that my uploads have been a little bit sparse lately. I kind of talked about that last episode. And so I wanted to make up for it with a special back to back episode, even though these two episodes really have nothing to do with each other. It's not like a two parter or anything other than we finally got our first nether star in this world and need to do something with it. So let's go ahead and turn this into a beacon. Yes. And I've got lots and lots of jungle logs. I was doing some lumberjacking between episodes, trying to replenish my wood supply. And let's go set up our first beacon. Uh, I forget exactly how much, how many blocks this takes. I, th I think it's like just over two and a half. What did I hear? Did y'all hear that? It sounded like a piglin suffocating or something. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go build our beacon. Which is appropriate because I'm going to be doing a lot of digging in today's episode. Uh, I'm going to set this up like out here in the ocean right in front of my base. So it'll just kind of hit. It won't hit over by my iron farm, my gold farm, probably. But all this area around here, it'll hit. So let's uh, let's come down here. We'll clear out a little bit of space. And I'm not going to worry about making like a nice clean area for this. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it down. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll fix that in just a second. Let's hear it for respiration. Pretty sure I've got a water breathing potion somewhere. Did I break the wrong? Oh, hello. Baby drown. Annoying baby drown. All right. Let's fill this in. Oh my goodness. At least those misclicks can stay. I think this is my first beacon underwater. Well, I guess not. I did build a beacon. Actually, no. So I did have a beacon that was underwater in season two. But it started out just underground, and then I eventually built a little lagoon pond around it. So I did not build a beacon underwater. It's a small but subtle difference. Oop, can't get trapped under the dock. I really need to come finish <laughs> finish my dock at some point. I've got all these legs that don't go anywhere. It's not my intention to have them go all the way down to the ocean floor, since some of them is like way, way deep below them. But I should at least have them come down to like here. <laughs> Whoops, that's not right. That's what I get for trying to talk and count at the same time. I should know by now I can't do that. All right, beacon goes on top. And of course I didn't bring any iron. We'll fix that really fast. All right, let's power this with, uh, I think we're gonna do haste two for now, since my intent is to actually do some hardcore mining today. Go pick up some of this stuff. I think it's all just gravel. I think I picked up all my iron blocks that I dropped. And then do we want to color it at all? I think I do, but I don't think I have any of the dye that I want. Let me let me take a look. Um, what I want is green. Or maybe lime green. But I don't have any cacti. And I don't have any sea pickles. So I think I'll have to wait on the green. Yeah. 
I'll wait on the green. Maybe I'll run across a wandering trader who sells sea pickles. <laughs> that happens quite a bit, actually. All right, let's get rid of this gravel. And I guess I can also put my ban hammer away. I'm not going to be needing that today. And yeah, just since I got a second dragon egg last time, which I was not expecting, I decided to do a little bit more intentional decorating with my two dragon eggs rather than just hanging them up in item frames. Like I had my one dragon egg previously, so that looks kind of cool. So what I want to do is I want to build a super mega semi-automatic sugarcane farm today. I say semi-automatic because it's not just going to run automated on its own. You can't just like go AFK and have this thing collect tons and tons of sugarcane. But with the push of a button, all the sugarcane will break. A hopper minecart will go collect everything, drop it off in a collection chest, and that's it. Like you don't have to go collect anything. Uh, I've done this sort of farm before. I don't know if it was specifically for sugarcane, but I've done farms like this where it's semi-automatic. You just like push a button and everything else goes. So waiting for <laughs> waiting for the sun to go down so we can sleep. But where I'm going to build this is actually right here on the side of this cliff. I've been trying to figure out what I want to do with this cliff face ever since really like episode two or three. Since I decided I wanted to build a base over here in this cliff, I, w I picked this spot because of this awesome cliff face. And I just haven't been able to figure out what I want to do with it. This is what I want to do with it. I'm going to build this ultra mega sugarcane farm into the cliff up here. So we're going to be climbing up above our little archway, digging into the cliff, hollowing out this huge area, putting in the sugarcane farm, and then covering it up with glass so it looks nice and is protected. It's going to look really, really awesome. All right, sun is down. Let's sleep and then we'll get to work. This is actually a very, very long build. And I may need to do a little bit more editing than I've been doing for most of the series. Just because it's a long build because it's doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't necessarily need to show the same thing <laughs> over and over and over again. All right, so let's climb up here. Uh, I did a little bit of math in between episodes, kind of planning, planning this all out, kind of counted how tall this thing is, how tall I want to make it, how wide it's going to be, how many different levels I can put in. And if I start just a block or two above the top of my arch, then I should be able to get in six rows. And each row is going to contain uh, 15, no, 15, uh, 13, 13 sugar cane on one side and there's going to be two sides because just having 13 times six, what is that? Uh, eight carry the one 78 sugar cane. That's not quite enough. And so 156, that's good. That's good. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. So six levels that are all basically just the same thing. So you can see, I don't necessarily need to record doing the same thing six times. I'll kind of show it once and then maybe do a, like a build montage or something. So if we start here, let me, let's actually start with, how's this thing going to work? How, how's it going to be put together? Let's start with that. So let me get a couple little blocks here to kind of work with, to illustrate. So we're going to have some pistons. We're going to have some dirt. We're going to have some stairs. We're going to have some rails and yeah, everything else will be sort of in between filler construction material stuff. Okay. So on the very bottom level, there will be a row that minecart rails will go across. There will be a hopper minecart that goes along the rails to collect all of the uh, sugar cane which means that right above those rails will be a row of dirt with sugar cane planted in it. The sugar cane will be sourced, if you will, by, let's get up on top of this, some stairs. So let me throw down a temporary block there. Yeah, just use your imagination. <laughs> There'll be stairs that will be waterlogged 
so that we can plant sugar cane on the dirt. And then the sugar cane can grow up to three blocks high. So there will be just a row of just decorative blocks on top of the stairs, then a row of pistons, and then another row of decorative blocks on top of that. So that's what each layer of this build is going to look like. There will be a, a, a layer of glass in front of all this so that the sugar cane doesn't pop out and so that it looks nice. So for each layer, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six rows tall. And then right above this row, like right here above our heads, will be the, the blocks for the rail line for the next layer above us. So they're just going to sit one on top of each other. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, hopefully it will once we actually build this thing and put it all together. Whoa. I actually built this sugarcane farm in another world recently. And I was kind of showing off to my wife because I was really proud of it. I was like, check this out. And she's like, that, that's pretty cool. Did you come up with that yourself? And I say kind of, yes and no. Like I remember, I think it was Waddles many, many episodes ago. It's probably like two years ago when I first started getting into Minecraft. Um, he made a sugarcane farm in one of his worlds similar to this. It was the same basic principle, but I don't remember exactly how it worked. I just remembered that he did a sugarcane farm in the ground with multiple rows and hop, hopper minecart and everything. And so I kind of came up with this design based on remembering that he did that. So <laughs> I say that because I always like to give credit where credit's due. I don't want to take credit for other people's work. So it, it is, I did kind of come up with this design, but it's based on something I have seen other people do. Okay, so let's talk about dimensions for each row. Uh, let me throw all this stuff back in here. So each row is going to be 13 blocks wide. So this is going to be the center. I just knocked that one out. So I have a, a point of reference. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, that's too far. Six. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, our beacon down there is actually working against me now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. So let's kind of clear some of this out here. And then in terms of depth, let's see how this is going to work. So we're going to have a layer of glass in the very front, <clears throat> a row for the mine carts, a row for the pistons. Uh, there will be a row for the redstone that connects all the pistons. And then we're going to do another row right behind this going the opposite direction. So uh, pistons, minecart slash sugar cane. And then I want to have a little bit of space back here to kind of move around while building it. So I guess we'll go back six. All right, so now we need to go up six. So we've got two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go up more because eventually, by the time we're done, this whole cliffside is going to be dug out. So we might as well give ourselves some headroom to work with right now. You know what? I'm using my silk touch pickaxe. I've actually got tons and tons of stone right now. I'm going to swap out for my, whoops, <laughs> my uh, uh, fortune pickaxe because I actually need cobblestone right now. I spent a little bit of time at my stone generator between episodes, specifically getting cobblestone. 
because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reluctant to say I'm running low on it. I, I have way less cobblestone than I have stone. I'll say that. And so if I'm going to be doing a lot of digging of stone, let's get cobblestone. Is it? Why am I? Because <laughs> I'm a goober and I put the wrong pickaxe up. There we go. <laughs> Newbie Dave. That's more like it. Oh, that beacon is so nice. So nice. We're going to be doing so much mining today. It's going to go so much quicker now because of this. You know what? I think I'm actually doing this the wrong way. I'm starting at the bottom, which for construction purposes, absolutely. I need to start with the bottom row and then start building up. That's going to be so much easier. In terms of excavation, <laughs> I think I should be starting at the top and digging down. It's so much easier to dig down than up because after this row, I'm going to have to have something to stand on. I'm going to have to build the bottom row to have something to stand on to dig out the next row. And I'm probably going to fall off of that as I'm strafing back and forth. So maybe I go up to the very top and I just take a few minutes to dig this whole thing out. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to do that. Let me, let me go disc, not discard, but stow all of this stone that I've gotten so far clean up my inventory yeah you can see a row and a half of cobblestone versus well okay this used to be full <laughs> I don't know what I've done with all my stone lately <laughs> it used to be full <laughs> so maybe I should uh, go back and forth between silk touch and uh uh, fortune. Man, I'm having a hard time remembering the names of things. Okay, so, yeah, let me hop up to the very top of this. Let me grab my dimensions. So this is 491 over to 503. And then I know that I'm going to go back. I think it was six blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll sleep. And I'll make sure I have my shovel. Yep, I got my shovel. Uh, I don't think I need all this stuff in my inventory since I'm going to be digging down. So, kind of make some extra space so we don't have to make so many trips back and forth depositing stone. All right, let's go digging. I've already forgotten the dimensions. 491 to 503, seven blocks deep. So I'll probably just do like a little excavation montage here. Like I said, this one's going to have a little bit more editing than I've normally been doing this series, just because I know some of you are going to say, huh, I would like to see it, but I don't want to do an hour of just digging out a hillside. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, so funny story. <laughs> I decided to work on the edges first, just kind of dig out the sides and back. So I kind of knew what my boundaries were and then I could just go crazy with the middle. And I broke through to this sort of little cave system. And oh yeah, this is where I had my villagers stored. <laughs> I moved them all out, but I never really sealed up this area. And uh, yeah, I'm now digging out into it. Not a huge deal. This I've been meaning to come back and fill this whole area back in since I'm not going to use it. Um, I think for now, I'm just going to kind of wall it off. <laughs> and that will be a uh, some other time project.
All right, that actually was not as bad as I thought. That took maybe 15 minutes <laughs> to carve out, thanks to our handy dandy beacon over here. Um, I, it did occur to me very early on that I may have made a mistake by starting at the top and digging down. And that mistake is I'm shooting for six rows. The six rows probably aren't going to go all the way up to the very tip top. It's probably going to be like two or three rows short of the top, which means I'm probably going to end up putting some of that dirt back. Not a huge, not a huge problem. If I had known that going into this, probably still would have done it. <laughs> so not a huge deal. Just something to, uh, to think about. Also, if I decide to stop at like four rows, <laughs> that's a whole lot more to fill in. Anyways, let's, let's get started. Uh, so let's grab some stairs, some pistons, some rails, powered rails, levers. Uh, we're going to need something for the rails to go on. I think I'm going to use, uh, let's use some stone brick blocks since I've got <laughs> plenty of stone to work with. And I'll just go ahead and turn that into stone brick blocks now. And dirt. Yes. And some lights. Let's see. Let's start with that. Let's start with that. So I'm going to start with the back side just because I think it'll be easier to put in this side and then work on this side. So I've got the, the opening open. If I do the front first and I've kind of shut myself off. So let's just kind of measure out first. So again, this is going to be glass. In fact, let me go ahead and get a piece of glass to put down just as a kind of a permanent reminder, <laughs> this front row is going to be glass. There we go. All right. So that's going to be glass. So this is going to be rails uh, and dirt. Behind that, we'll have pistons, then redstone stuff, pistons, and rails. I thought about pushing this wall back one more row, just so I have a little bit more breathing space, but that was just more digging than I didn't want to. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put down rails. Some of these are going to be powered rails right now just to get things rolling, <laughs> pun. Uh, I'm just gonna do all rails and then I'll come back and replace some of them with powered rails in a little bit. Let's do some dirt on top of that. So this is where all of the sugar cane gonna go. Um, let me also grab, let's see. We're gonna need to dig back into the cliff side here anyways for the rail line it's gonna have to like loop around and come back uh should have gotten some regular stone here whoops not far enough so we're gonna need that and the reason i bring that up is i think we need some way to get back and forth here. Um, and I'm thinking about just kind of doing like a, a shoot, a tunnel of some sort over here. Having it sort of come out right over here. something kind of like this then I'll go get some scaffolding I probably could have left that there I've, I've got <laughs> enough scaffolding to spare uh, let's see this is gonna go here and then I think yeah I may end up doing like a really tall tunnel, not tunnel, shoot of scaffolding here so I can get up and down between the rows. But since we're all just doing the bottom row right now, this is probably fine. This is going to do the whole rail line. Uh, 
Okay, so there is where our, uh, what is it called? Sugarcane. <laughs> sugarcane. Wow. Having a hard time with the names today. That's where our sugarcane is going to go. So what I'm going to do is right behind this, I'm going to do one, two temporary blocks, and then just a whole row of temporary blocks right here. This is just going to make it so much easier to place the stairs. I kind of, stairs can be a little bit hard to work with when you're not placing them on the ground. So what I'm going to do is not that. I'm going to do one sideways and then the rest like this. That way the stairs on the end will contain the water. Um, the way that water flows out of stairs, honestly, it's kind of weird. It's super duper weird. In fact, I'm not going to come put the water in until I have everything in place. I'm not going to do the water for one row and then come back and do the water for the next row. I'm going to wait until I have everything in and then come back, put all the water in just because like I said, I've done this build before and I had a couple of issues where I accidentally broke, uh, like maybe one of the side blocks or one of the stairs or something and the water sort of leaked out. Not only did it wash away redstone below it, but if it touches another stair that has that's waterlogged, it like the water connects and it's so hard to get rid of. It's just water's weird. So I'm just not going to mess with water until we get the whole thing built. Um, I just realized that air quotes temporary row of dirt that we put in behind the stairs. Um, actually, yeah, that that is temporary. But right above that, we're going to need something. We're going to need something. Where's my concrete? I've gotten a little bit disorganized. There we go. Let's do red concrete. I like doing red concrete for redstone. Okay, so these are going to be waterlogged. We're going to have a row of some sort of decorative block above that. Um, I thought I put these on my hot bar and we'll do pistons above that. And the pistons, very important. They need to be one block above the ground, above the dirt. There needs to be a, a row in between the dirt and the pistons, because this is where the sugar cane is going to be planted. We want the pistons to break the block above the sugar cane. If it breaks the bottom block, then your sugar cane is destroyed and it's not going to keep growing after that. So we just want to break the second block and the, if the sugar cane has grown two or three blocks, all of that above it will be broken and fall down onto the dirt. Oh goodness, which I just realized this backside, we are going to have to come back and close off this entire back row. Uh, we're going to have glass on the front to keep the, the sugar cane contained, but we're going to need something on the backside to keep the sugar cane con sugar cane contained. That's actually kind of hard to say. So yeah, I, I still need that space to work around in. I'm not sorry that I dug it out, but we are going to have to fill that in. Okay. Um, let's do, I'm going to do jungle wood as filler. Let's just grab a bunch of this stuff. I say wood planks. We're going to do jungle planks. Actually, you know, I should just bring my shulker box up with me. Why do I keep going down to get stuff out of it? It's a shulker box. It's portable. That's the whole point. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have to wait to put the blocks on top of the stairs until I waterlog those. So right here, we're going to do, and actually on this back row, not as important because we're actually never going to see this back row. The only reason I'm doing a back row is to double how much output we get from this farm. If we just did the front side, we'd only get half as much output. Um, by just doubling up and having the rail, the minecart just sort of loop around. Yes, it's going to take twice as much materials, but we get twice as much output in very little additional space. So that's, that's good. 
Uh, we need light back here though. We need light for the sugar cane to grow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one, two, three. One, two, three. We'll break that fourth one. On this side, we'll do one, two, three. Break that. And then one, two, three. Um, is my counting off? One, two, three, four, five. Nope. Oh, oh, I think when I was prototyping this, playing around with dimensions and everything, I'd originally made this farm 15 blocks wide instead of 13, and then I decided to shorten it. Not a big deal. We'll just move this over by one. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. It doesn't really need to be, especially the back side. but I'm going to do the front and back exactly the same. Okay, so that's going to help keep the sugar cane contained on the back, and then we'll have to come in and fill this whole back row with stone or dirt or something when we're done. Uh, like I said, we'll f uh, put the water in later. Um, I think we are done on this side. So let's hop into the middle here and we'll put down some redstone. So let me see, I'll do one, two, three. We'll break out these two. I said redstone. Uh, Powered rails. Powered rails. Rails that are made with redstone. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Turn that on. Come to this side. One, two, three. Break those. Put that down. Turn that on. And this will just make sure that the minecart has enough oomph to get all the way around without stalling. Let's also do one in the middle here. And then same thing on this side. I'm going to put all my levers in the middle here so that you don't actually see them when it's all said and done. Whoops. <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, rails. Kind of like water. Slightly annoying. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's do our dirt. Which is going to go directly above the rails. And stop there. Ooh, it's gonna get tenuous. We'll put our temporary road dirt back. Probably should not have replaced that so soon. Do stairs. Now we can get rid of this all together. And we'll do pistons. Whoa. And above that, we will do some of this, one of those, some more of these, one of those, a couple more of them, one of that, and finish it off with thus. That didn't make any sense. Okay, so let me let me quickly just put this row in temporarily. I'm gonna have to come back and waterlog all that later, so I'm gonna remove that. But just just to get an idea of how this is gonna look. So that is basically one row. Imagine sugar cane on top of the dirt. That's basically what it's going to look like. I think let's also put some uh, jungle planks uh, in the middle. Let's get back up there. Let's get down here. I think I want to do jungle planks in the middle right here. And that's because we need to keep this open for the minecart. And you're going to be able to see through it. And I don't want you to see through it. So. Um, I should really go get my axe <laughs> now that I'm actually doing stuff with wood. Uh, I'm actually going to do it right here. 
this will be in line with the jungle planks above it. Now, <laughs> we're not done. We are not done with this bottom row because even though we've got all the blocks in place and we just need to waterlog stuff and put in sugarcane, we also need to make it functional. And that means redstone. Um, did I even bring? I didn't bring any of my redstone stuff with me. Let's grab some of that. We need to make a couple of these. Probably more later, but we'll start with that. Let's throw the rest of this in here for now. All right, the redstone wiring for the rail, that's very simple. It's just going to be any powered rail is going to have a lever on it. That's fine. Uh, what we're ultimately going to do to trigger this whole thing is I want to have, uh, I want to have maybe right here is where there will be a double chest. And this is where the whole thing is going to start. There's going to be a hopper minecart here. We'll like have a button on the wall. We'll click that button. That's going to trigger all of the pistons to fire and break the sugar cane. That'll also launch the hopper minecart. It'll go up through the wall and come out up here and then make its rounds and just go up row after row after row, spiraling all the way up to the top and then come spiraling back down and stop where it started and then deposit all of that sweet, sweet sugar cane into the double chest at the very end. So the redstone for the uh, hopper minecart, super, super simple. That's just gonna be powered rails with levers everywhere. It's really the redstone for the pistons that we've gotta worry about after we sleep. So let's get back up top here. Ah, missed it. Ah, do it. Let's just do this since we're not done with this bottom row until we actually come back and put in all the water and um, sugar cane. I think I'm just going to go ahead and put in some scaffolding. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. In between the pistons and one row down, let's do a row of blocks. And, oh, there's a, there's a lever right there. You know what, this lever, we're never gonna see it. Let's put it on this side. <laughs> Maybe. All right, so the redstone all along this red concrete. And this is going to come back into the wall a little ways. We'll do a repeater right here because this is a long stretch of redstone. It's 13 blocks. My original design was 15. That's actually the maximum distance that a redstone signal can carry and so you actually could not make this any wider without <clears throat> excuse me without doing something more complicated with redstone like maybe have it come in from both sides rather than just one side but because it's less than 15 blocks we can just do a repeater here to amplify the signal back up to full strength and then this will carry it down to all of the pistons on both sides um, we can quickly test this I mean, there's not much to test because it's just a, a strip of redstone with a repeater, but, you know, sure. That sounded like 26 pistons firing, didn't it? <laughs> I, I guess. Okay. Um, somehow, we're going to have to get a signal from down in our base where this is going to start 
up to this. And to make things more complicated, <laughs> we're going to have a minecart that's looping around and going from one row up to the next around here. So let's do let's do the minecart rails first. Because we need to figure out where the minecart's gonna go. And then we'll probably just do like a, a column of redstone or maybe like alternating glass blocks carrying a redstone signal up, something like that. To get, to get the rest of the signal up to each row of pistons. So we'll start with the rail. And before we can start with the rail, we actually need to figure out where the rail is going to come out on the next row. So let's actually start with some more blocks like this so this is going to be the blocks that hold the rail for the next row is that right so here's the sugar cane that's one two three yep so this is going to be the rail for the next row that's fine we don't need to put all of it in just yet and i think we're not going to see the sides from the front because when we're all said and done, everything's going to be blocked off by either the planks or dirt or pistons or something. You're not going to see anything except for the front facade. So we can just kind of tear up <laughs> the whole side here. All right, so this is where the rail is going to come into the wall. I'm just going to break all this. Whoops. Let's put that repeater back there. This is why I like to use concrete or some other custom block so you don't accidentally break something that's got your uh, redstone devices on it. Okay, so we need to come out at least two blocks before we start going up. Otherwise, the minecart is going to snag on that dirt if we if we go up like right here. It's not going to leave enough uh, headroom. Um, I think we, we'll just use regular stone for this. So let's do that and that. We'll power this on. Let's do that. Turn. Yes, good. Let's do another redstone or <laughs> powered rail right there. Um Excuse me. Two more powered rail right there. We need lots of powered rails on these inclines to make sure it's got enough oomph to keep climbing and get around this turn to come back up on top here. Uh, if we come down here, I'm gonna break that. This is, see, see, this is why you don't wanna waterlog these stairs until the very end when you're done because that would have just released the water. It would have washed away all these uh, rails. It would have somehow connected the flowing water to the other waterlogged stair next to it, making it really hard to clean. It's, it's just a, it's a mess, you guys. Don't do it. All right, this is 493. So 493 is going to be our next red uh, powered rails. Powered rails. Come on, Dave. And then it looks like that lines up with the lights. So I can just do that one without having to count it out. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it looks like we've got plenty of room in the middle here to carry a redstone signal up from below for all the pistons. Just go ahead and clear the rest of this out. Okay. 
how does that look? I'm going to put that back and we'll create a little crawl space here to get around. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so let's actually test this, what we've got so far. At least the rails. We can test the rails, make sure that a hopper minecart um, actually, actually, actually. Let's do this. Let's complete the second story rail line. Powered rail, not redstone rail. Huh? Huh? I'm getting better. All right, let's come put in our levers. We probably don't need to waste as much as many frog lights on the backside since we're naturally going to see it. Two would probably light the whole thing up. In fact, if we really wanted to, we could just do like torches. Um, no, no, I think we need the, the block light so that there's no like little crevices where the, uh, the sugar cane could pop out and get stuck. Uh, this is temporary. This is temporary just to send the minecart back when it's done. All right, so let's test this out. Yeah, I didn't need to drop down here. I thought my <laughs> thought my minecart was in a choker box down there. Um, so where is this going to start? It's going to start down here. We don't have it going all the way down to our base yet. So let me just kind of start it there and give it a little nudge. Should go all the way around to the back. Come up. Loop around. Bounce off and come back loop around we can't see it on the back but it's going and it returns awesome that's beautiful okay let's let's go ahead and actually do the rest of the rail that's going to lead back to our base area so let's clean this up get this out of the way i smelted up some more glass i realized earlier that <laughs> i didn't have enough glass because I didn't bother to do the math on how much I would actually need. This is all the glass that's going to cover the, the front side when we're done. So let's put a little double chest in the ground here. And let's see if we, yeah, we'll do double chest in the ground here and then we can do a hopper behind it. All right, so we'll have a button, whoops, oops. Our beacon's a little too strong. So this will be powered rail, powered rail. And then we'll do, I don't wanna do a stone button. We need something that stands out. Let's do a black stone button. Um, you can do black stone buttons, right? Does, oh, does it have to be polished black stone? Yeah, it's a polished black stone button. Sneaky, sneaky. Um, so if we do this here, that will shoot off the minecart. Somehow we need to get that signal, that same signal, over to the redstone line for the pistons. We'll worry about that next. Let's get the minecart set up. Okay, let's get some coordinates. So we are at 488 here, 
and Y62. Got my silk touch. Yep, let's get rid of this glass that's in the way. All right, so we're going to start going down over here. When you get down to Y62, oh goodness, we're already at 488 right here. Whoops, can't break that one. So that needs to be there so we can turn. Ooh, this is going to be tight. Um, I think I think we're going to need one more block there for the turn. Ooh, this is going to be really tight. Oh no, it's so it's too close for us to just make a beeline straight to the chest. So what we're going to have to do instead is kind of swing out a little bit and then come back. Kind of like this. Let's uh temporary frog light for lighting. So we'll loop around. Let's come out to Yeah, that should work. Oh goodness. I think Okay, yeah, here we are. Here we are. Beautiful. Um, okay, so this is fine. This is fine. We can do that. So I think this will work. Don't worry, I'm going to come replace some of this with powered rails in just a second. I just want to make sure that in terms of... Um, Elevation change and turns all the <laughs> whoops, all the pieces will actually connect We're not gonna have any broken segments <clears throat> Okay, beautiful all right, so then Let's do some powered rails right here along with the stone that <laughs> should be there. And we're going to have to, uh oh, not on that side. We'll have to uh, turn this on somehow. No, we can probably, do we just clear out this whole area? I think so, because we're going to need to send a redstone signal up here anyways. So we're going to have to do a lot more clearing. Let's just go ahead and expand what we've got here. No reason that needs to be so tight. Careful not to break our rail line. Okay, speaking of which, let's do powered rail. And I think we can do another one there. This, we need so much oomph to get up this little segment here. Ah, that. Open. Yes. No. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's cool. I did not intend that. That one switch is powering both those little sections of powered rail. Okay. Okay. Um, let's test this out. I think that might be in the way. Let's clear that out. Why is that? I think I just, in the process of digging open that up too far. 
So we should have enough clearance. We should have enough power. We should be good to go here. For the rail line. So let's test this out. Boom. Get up and go. Yes, sir. It get up and got. And then it'll bounce back. Come swinging back around. And end up back where we started on top of the hopper, dumping everything into our double chest, including a random piece of stone that was laying around somewhere. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, hmm, what are we going to do about the redstone signal to the pistons? Let's just go ahead and do something there. We're going to have to put either a redstone torch or, well, no, not a redstone, well, maybe. Redstone something there. I don't really like redstone torch columns where you just have like alternating blocks and redstone torches that turn on and off and on and off. But that might be our best option here. I'm curious if we did that. So we would need the redstone torch on that block to be off. We need it to be off by default, which means this one would need to be on, off, on, off, um, on. Actually, that this may be good. This may be really good. This just may work out in our favor. Did I use up all my redstone torches? I think I did. It's a mess. All right, so whoops, not there. We need to be on the block. There we go. If we replace all of these stone blocks with redstone torches, Then the one right here will be off by default. Perfect. And then once we hit the button and send a signal over to this redstone column. Um, oh, is that going to work? Yes, 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 yes. What we'll need to do is replace that with this. And then we'll send a redstone signal into this block, which will deactivate that torch, which will flip all of the redstone torches above it. All right, so how do we do that? Or, or, I think this will work. Redstone's not my forte, guys. I always have to try it out. Yep, that'll work. Okay. That's a little bit better because it starts off one block lower. Because we've got to get a redstone signal, like, under and around these rails somehow. So what we're going to do, we're going to come back here and I'm going to replace all this when we're done. Let's do redstone line coming back this way. Um, I think this will be strong enough that we don't need to carry it with a repeater. I think that's going to work. That's remarkably simpler than I, than I expected it to be. Let's just kind of close up some of that for now. And we'll give this... Oh, uh, that, that's fine. That, that was just decoration. I threw in some slabs and stairs and everything on this wall to just kind of decor. Uh, so let's try this. 
I heard the pistons. I heard pistons. We can actually, like, since we can't see the pistons pop, let's just do this. I'll put a block there, and then we'll hit the button, and the block should be one block further out. Beautiful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so the bottom of this is done. The bottom of this is done. We've got our starting point. We've got a single button that launches the minecart and triggers the pistons. This minecart, as we add each row, is just going to keep climbing higher and higher. And the redstone signal for the pistons, as we add each row, will just extend this redstone column, this redstone torch column. Which I think, oh, now that I think about it, oh, each row is six blocks tall. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and the one below that's on. That needs to be off. Um, we're going to have three redstone torches in between each row. And so it's going to alternate off, on, off, on, off, on. We're going to have to do something. We're going to have to do something a little bit different to extend this redstone signal for the pistons up each row, probably a combination of redstone column and uh, like glass with redstone, just to make sure that the signal's always off at the start of the piston line by default. Okay, I think, <laughs> I told you this was gonna be a long build, you guys. I, th I, think, I think we need to call it quits for today. <laughs> So part one of our ultra mega sugarcane farm. We've got the first row complete with the exception of the waterlogged blocks and the sugarcane in the glass. But we've got all the pistons hooked up. We've got the rail line hooked up. We've got the redstone hooked up. We've got it all tied back to the button in our base, which is the starting point. Uh, all we need to do now is just <laughs> copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. And once we get all the different rows put in, we'll come back, uh, waterlog all the stairs, add the sugar cane, add the glass, fill in that back row with some sort of solid block so the, the sugar cane doesn't pop out, and turn it on. Yeah, I mean, turn it on. It, it's not something that's going to be on and off like the gold farm. It'll be let it run. <laughs> and then when we're ready, hit the button to actually harvest. So this is really cool. I'm super excited about this. It's going to look so much better once we actually have sugarcane in there and it, there's some green to make it pop. Right now it's very brown and gray, but once we get that green in there, it's really going to pop. I thought about doing moss blocks instead of the planks. I just don't have enough for that, but uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll farm some moss blocks between episodes because that would also really look good to add some more green to this build. All right, that's going to wrap things up for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, please hit that like button. And while you're down there, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notified of future episodes as they come out. Thanks, y'all, and have a great day.